Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I want to take a little time, answer a couple of questions from viewers. Now, one question I get quite often from viewers is, did you get anything new? Have you got anything cool that we haven't seen yet? Did you get a new gun? You know, I think people ask that question because sometimes we can't get something for ourselves, so we like to see what other people get so we can live vicariously through them. You know, we get a little bit of pleasure, at least, from seeing someone else get something cool and then learning about it. Uh, that is not the case as far as I am concerned. I do not feel that way. I do not like living vicariously through you. If you send me pictures of cool stuff that you have that I can't have, uh, just know that I am not enjoying that. I hate you, and I hope you get cancer. Just for the record. But when people do ask me, have you gotten anything new? Usually it's no. But this week, I have got something new. So I'd like to take a moment here and show you what it is. As you can probably see here, it is a Ruger GP100 with a four inch barrel. Now this one is a little different than a lot of the GP100s you might see. Has a couple different features here. For one, it's got more of a polished blue on it. It's kind of got a nice shine to it. And not only does it have a polished blue to it, but it also has a high polished trigger and a high polished hammer. It also has a really nice unfluted cylinder. And I just love an unfluted cylinder on a modern revolver. I love the looks of it. But it's when you turn this gun around that you actually realize what's so special about this gun. When you turn it around, you notice it's got the special grips. These are the Jeff Quinn Tribute grips because this is a Jeff Quinn Tribute pistol. A lot of you might know Jeff Quinn more as Gun Blast. In fact, when I met him the few times I did meet him, I always called him Gun Blast. I don't think I ever called him by his first name. But uh, this is the tribute piece to him from Ruger. It even has a special serial number here. It's JQ486, I believe is what this one is. So uh, limited run of guns, and they are a tribute to someone who, for all intents and purposes, was a super nice guy. Like I said, when I've met him in the past, he was nice to me. I uh, talked to him on the phone once. He was very nice to me there. Uh, maybe it's because he didn't know who I was. I don't know, but he was very nice to me. I'd like to think he would be nice to me either way. But this, like I said, is a tribute to who I think was a very great person and a great personality. Now to go over the features of it really quick, it is a five shot 44 special. Now it's five shots because this is a GP100, which is Ruger's mid-size revolver. It's kind of like a KL frame for Smith & Wesson, kind of like how the 69 has five shots of 44 Magnum. This has five shots of 44 Special. Now it does have adjustable rear sights and it has a brass bead driftable front sight. Now, to be honest, if this was just a regular ordinary edition GP100, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Even though it is really nice looking, I just don't need a five shot 44 special. I have a six shot 44 special, an in frame Smith. So I don't really need this gun. But since it is so beautiful and it is a tribute to someone who I considered to be a great gun YouTuber and someone I had respect for, I really wanted it. Problem was when it first came out, people were jacking the price up on them really high. So I couldn't afford one. Couldn't find one that was affordable for me at least, let's just say that. But during a live chat the other night, I started thinking while we were looking at the Ruger site, I was like, is that the only four inch blue GP100 they make? And I was like, but I saw a blued four inch GP100 in Sporting Systems cabinet the other day. Could it possibly be one of the Jeff Quinn ones? I didn't think it was, I didn't remember it being one, but I went back and looked the next day and yes, it was. It had just been uh, set in the cabinet with the Jeff Quinn side of the grips turned to the floor. So you didn't really see it. I didn't really pay attention to what caliber it was or what gun it was or anything. So uh, it was there and didn't even know it. In fact, when I went in and looked at it, they had another one in the back. So they had two. So I was able to pick up a brand new one here that hadn't even been molested by everyone yet. So like I said, I probably wouldn't have bought it on its own. But since it is a tribute to someone, like I said, who I respected, I was very glad to find one. And now I am very happy that I have it. It is a beautiful gun and it is a beautiful tribute. All right, with that being said, I want to move on to our second question here. And the question I'm going to answer today is one that I've gotten a lot of times in the past. I believe I've covered in videos before, but I always have to remember some people have never seen my old videos. So I'm going to answer it here. The question is, when it comes to revolvers, 
What is the difference between a one-piece barrel and a two-piece barrel? Well, to answer this question, I'm going to show you some different barrels here. Now, the first thing you need to do to see if you've got a one-piece barrel or a two-piece barrel is look at the muzzle. Look right here at the crown. Does it look like this is all one piece of metal or does it look like it's two? If it looks like it's one, like this GP100 with the short barrel, then it's probably a one piece barrel. That means that all of this is one giant piece of metal and they cut the bore right directly into this whole section of metal. If you pulled the barrel off this gun, you would see that it all comes off in one piece and there's like a little screw section here that you actually twist onto the gun, but it's all one solid piece, so that's a one piece barrel. Now, when you look at the front end of some two piece barrels, some of them are very easy to pick out, some are not as easy. Like on the Chiapa Rhino here, it's very easy to see. And on some of the Smith & Wessons, it's very easy to see because they use a system where there's a castle nut or similar nut on the end here. The barrel screws into the gun, the shroud slides down over it, that's the barrel shroud, which is the second piece of the two-piece barrel, and then there's a nut that tightens down and holds the pieces together. That's the ones that are easier to see, but there are some that are a little harder to tell. Like if you look at the front end of this Smith here, it's actually two pieces, but it's a little harder to see because there's no castle nut or anything. These two pieces are screwed on together, and the barrel itself is what's holding the uh, shroud on real tight. There's no castle nut on the end or anything like that. So it just screws in, like I said, through the barrel while the barrel is already over it and then it tightens onto the gun. But it's real hard to see it here because all you see around this is a little tiny lip, but it is a two piece barrel. A lot of times you'll see uh, what looks like a flat piece out here that is just like the solid size of the front of the gun or slightly smaller. That's also a two-piece barrel usually. If you can see a delineation between two different pieces of metal coming together somewhere on the front of the barrel, that's probably a two-piece barrel. Even that new Ruger I just picked up seems to use the two-piece barrel. So I was very surprised about that. So there you have it. Pretty simple. That's the difference between a one-piece barrel and a two-piece barrel. The two pieces, the barrel is separate from the shroud and one way or another holds the shroud in place once it's tightened on. The one-piece barrels are just one solid piece that are bored out. Now, the advantage to the two-piece is they're easier to get right. You can tighten the barrel as tight as it needs to be without getting the barrel off center. If the barrel itself is one solid threaded piece, well, if you get it a little too tight or not tight enough, you can end up with a canted barrel. And that's a problem Smith & Wesson had for quite a while. So the two-piece barrels really get rid of that canted barrel issue. So they have their advantages. As far as their disadvantages, I don't really know of any as long as the barrel's made well, but I guess some people could argue they're not quite as strong as a full one-piece barrel. But I've had no problem with two-piece barrels, and I don't see any reason to say they're lesser than one-piece barrels, but I do know that they are definitely easier to put together right. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank you for coming. I do appreciate you coming. And I want to say, I hope you come back again next week. Until then, I want to remind everyone out there to always carry, especially if it's a revolver, whether it's one-piece barrel or two-piece barrel, and stay safe until I see you again. Today, I want to deal with a couple of questions that I've get, uh, let's act like a human being this time. Uh, so, no, I don't want to save them up. It's fuck. That makes it seem like I'm going to spend like one minute on each question. Dry mouth, can't fucking talk. That was bad. That was really bad. Take viewer ideas from, fuck! God damn! Is this my first fucking video? Forgot to set the goddamn timer. I don't fucking know where I'm at. <clears throat> I forget I'm fucking filming. <coughs> Fucked it up. So I think I would take uh, uh, a second here. I think I would take.
God damn it! The barrel, the bore, you know, the, the, the. Now the first thing you really need to do to see if you've got a one piece, blah! I do appreciate you coming and I hope you come again tomorrow. No, that's not right. No tomorrow. No, there is a tomorrow, but no show tomorrow.